In today's installment of our Yes and No series, we're going to talk about the Lagoon 51, and we're going to meet Stefano Pizzi, the CEO of Spartavento, one of the major lagoon importers in Italy. We'll compare this boat to two outstanding models, the Aura 51 and the Bali 4.8. Follow me. We're in front of Cittara on the Amalfi Coast, a short distance from Marina de Recci, where we find one of the many offices of the Spartavento Group, one of the main lagoon importers in Italy. And they're also Beneteau and Genou dealers, as well as one of the major charter companies in Italy. They're also the only ones who have so far agreed to come here on a boat to meet us for the Yes and No series. The only one who had done so until now is Giovanni Tarantino of Race Nautico with the Fontaine Peugeot. Today, after a long time, we finally have another figure from the boating world who's brave enough to appear on this small stage. Specifically, it's Stefano Pizzi. Hi, Stefano. Hi, Maurizio. Stefano is the CEO of Spartavento, and he's here to answer my questions. In this installment of Yes and No, I'd like to turn the tables a little bit. Instead of asking you about the five best features of your boat as usual, I'll mention a competing model and you'll tell me which is, in your opinion, the most notable difference between this Lagoon 51 from the boat I'm going to mention, which is the Bali 4.8. With this, I'm going to have a field day, Maurizio. There would be so much to talk about. <laughs> You're so mean. I'm not mean. I'm well informed. I would like you to turn around for a minute so that you see what I want to show you and to our viewers. On this side deck, as you can see, we find five hatches. As you can see, they are used to ventilate the cabin. Ventilating the cabin means staying cool. It means that you can spend the summer season, so the month of August, without air conditioning, just with normal air. Well, that's a benefit that Bali doesn't offer. Bali offers a deck that is fully enclosed. You mean there's no hatch? Right, no hatch at all. They use the side openings for ventilation. So for a principle of height difference, the air must come from above to circulate inside the cabins. On the other hand, this boat has both the side portals and the high hatches. Right, there must be a difference in height. This doesn't happen. Yes, both the side portholes that you saw and the high hatches. So there is much more ventilation than in the Bali. So I think that's a point in our favor. Yes, that's a big difference. It's a key feature. To talk about the second boat, I'd like to take you to the cockpit. Are you following me? Let's go. Now I'll mention the second boat and you'll tell me about another point that you think is in favor of your model compared to the other boat. That is the Aura 51. Let's talk about the cockpit. The difference in favor of Lagoon 51 lies not so much in the amount of space, because they're about the same size, but in quality and therefore in the system for letting people move around freely and comfortably. So we're talking about ease of movement. We are talking about ease of movement and seating too, because in the Aura 51 we find this bench that can accommodate two or three people at the table, so for dinner or lunch. But this bench has no backrest, so not only is it a hindrance for people moving around, as well as taking up some space, but in my opinion it is also somewhat uncomfortable. If you spend two or three hours there chatting with your friends, playing cards or having dinner, you will feel discomfort. I prefer to rest my back in a simple chair like these, which I can also fold and put aside to let people move around better. In my opinion, this is a remarkable standout feature. So we're talking about ease of movement and comfort. After these first two points where I mentioned competitor models and he pointed out key features, we return to the traditional format of the Yes and No series. So Stefano will mention the best features of Lagoon 51 and I'll counterpoint him with the same features in competitor models. Is it okay with you? Where can we start? Let's go have a seat in the salon. Great, I'll follow you. Here we are, Maurizio. We have reached the other standout feature, the salon. 
the salon, which is actually very large. Very comfortable and very large. Let's compare it with another one that's just as big and just as attractive. The salon of the Aura 51, which will haunt your dreams at the end, at the end of the day. At the end of the day, Aura 51 will haunt my dreams. Aura 51 salon. Which extra feature can we find in the salon of the Lagoon 51? In terms of space, there is no big difference. The size in square meters is the same. In terms of ease of movement, there are some hindrance to the movement of people on board that I would have avoided. We have a fairly comfortable galley, and it's as big as their one. They also have this island, which takes up space in the passageway below deck and cannot be moved. It's right in the middle. It's right in the middle, so it does not allow for depth of view upon entering. And it is not even comfortable for enjoying breakfast or anything else. I prefer a cozy salon with this huge table that is foldable, as you can see. Here we can accommodate either the crew for lunch or the owner in the morning when he wants to get up and enjoy more privacy instead of going out. And to have breakfast in peace and comfort. So I think this salon is a key added benefit. So you say it's more enjoyable. A more enjoyable and friendly space. Let's move on to the next point. What is it? Let's go outside. Get on the flybridge. I'm following you. Grazie. Since you took me to the flybridge, I assume that the next standout feature you're going to mention for this boat is the flybridge itself. To make the challenge a bit harder, I'll ask you to compare it to what I think is a gorgeous flybridge, that of the Aura 51. It's certainly a nice flybridge. The flybridge of the Aura 51 is quite large, like this one, and quite cozy. But we have a detail which I think is crucial. It is this cover, this hard flybridge bimini that allows for a cozy and shaded environment and for total privacy. This is a lounge where six to eight people can sit comfortably and enjoy an aperitif, a snack for lunch or a light evening meal. It is clearly an added benefit, a sheltered space added to the boat. We don't find this shelter in the Aura 51 because the boom there is much lower, so this cover cannot fit there. That boat doesn't really have enough space for a hard top. Another added benefit, as you can see, is the backrest that can be overturned. So the seat can be used either to accommodate your guests in the lounge or as the captain's seat. In addition, we have an option that is not fitted on this boat at the moment, but can be requested. When lowering the table, there is an extension piece with a big cushion that allows you to make a very comfortable chaise lounge for two or three people to enjoy a good reading or relax in peace. Great. Now let's move on to the next point. Let's go. Con piacere. Andiamo. So, we're going to talk about platforms. Sure, we're both right on top of it, the bathing platform. Which is huge, I see. It is an extremely big platform for a 51-footer. It is comfortable, and its height on water is not considered a great height. Actually, it is quite low compared to many other catamarans. I'll ask you to compare it to another boat with similar features, mostly in this middle part. The Bally 4.8, which has two tails, are joined together by a stationary platform, not a lifting one like this, which extends from one side to the other. The first difference is that the middle platform of the Bali is slightly higher than the side footboards, so it is quite uncomfortable to always climb these steps compared to our boat where you can adjust the tender lift as you see fit. And then, in my opinion, since the platforms in the structure are higher, it causes a rumble of water noise when some wave is created by the movement of a speedboat or dinghy. And the sound of flapping water is a dull noise that can bother those who are relaxing in the cockpit. On the other hand, this one can be raised when you're done using it. It's also used for the dinghy. It is used for the dinghy, and then you fold the wings, you moor for the dinghy. All right. To sum it up, we have the size of the platforms, their low height, which makes it easy to get on board. It allows you to connect these two platforms and can be adjusted as you want because it is automatic. And with that, I think we're done. We can say one more thing. Sorry to interrupt. Of course. Because this is a crucial nice thing. Catamarans are often moored alongside the berth, so this is the perfect place to get on the dock ashore, which is a small step. 
This is an added benefit that other boats don't have. And with this last note, we end this installment of Yes and No. We thank Stefano Pizzi of Spartavento for his advice. Thanks, Stefano. Thank you, Maurizio. We thank Spartavento for providing us with the boat that was the subject of this installment. I also thank you for the attention you've given us and look forward to welcoming you to the next installment of Yes and No on ICAT SVN Catamarans. Thank you.